Here I am again, taking the line from GTA. Oh shit, here we go again. I have to do it like that, I had to. I want to make something clear before I get into this review. Now I'm going to make this really short because the show was a bit sloppy. No, it wasn't a bit sloppy, it was sloppy. Okay, but sloppy. I thought I was going to take time to do maybe once a week these videos. And one of my subscribers said it very clearly. You've been sucked in. Something different, you've been sucked in. And he's right. I can't deny that. I'm not saying that the wrestling and the storylines and the feuds are good. They're still like this to me. To me personally. Because we've gone through this before. No matter... I want to say this clearly. That JD is freaking lying. Just Alex is freaking lying. We went through this before with resets with Vince. Multiple times. And I know they would say, well, that was with Vince. It don't make a difference. How many times have we gone through a reset, a hard reset with the product, and it looked great for the first couple of months, and then that's it? I'm not saying that we're going to go back to that again. But I'm the type of person that is a realist. Don't expect me, me, to start praising the damn hell out of these shows. I'm not going to. I'm going to give you a real, fair, honest review. And yeah, I'm going to botch my words. And yeah, I'm going to forget people's names. Because I don't watch the damn product often. So I'm going to forget. But at least you will get an honest review. Not someone who is so desperate for the company to work right. That they're overlooking things. Now I'm not jumping down either just Alex or JD's throats. I'm not. They got the right to feel the way they feel. They're constant podcasters who are making their livelihood off of wrestling. More power to them. I'm not. So I can't be like them. But I'm going to be uh, I'm going to be more honest than them from a reviewer who's a more of a realist than anything else. As much as the product has changed, you can't just say, "Hey, it's great." When it's not, even though they've said themselves it's not there yet. But I'm still thinking We've gone through this before, hard resets with the product more than a couple of times over the years. Yes, it's no longer Vince doing it, but it's not the point. The point is we've had hard resets to try and make us interested. And after a couple of months, we got the shaft. I'm not saying we're getting it here, but I'm being honest about it. Now, before we get started, I now know, because I have forgotten, when, we did, when I did my raw review... I forgot which team they were talking about that was basically unable to go to Toronto. And that was Toxic Attraction. Gigi Dolan is hurt. She cannot go. And also another team, well, one of them I've forgotten already. <laughs> I've forgotten who it was, but it looks like if it's medical protocol, that means either she's got COVID or she just didn't get the injection and they won't let her be there unless she's injected, unless she's got the vaccine. I got one injection of the vaccine. That's all I got. I didn't get no boosters. So I understand. But leaving the country, go somewhere else. They have a certain rule. If you're not doing it or if you're sick, you ain't coming. There you go. Now, let's, let's get to the opening of the show. Simply put, I said when I saw Taylor Bates basically confronting a Braun Breaker that... This could be a unification, a match, title versus title. That's what I thought. And it seems to be right because once Braun called out Tyler, Tyler made it very clear. Look, I have been the first champion of NXT UK and I'm the current last one. I think it's time to combine these titles. Let's get it done. And Braun said, all right, no problem. So now we are getting a Braun Breaker versus Tyler Banks. Well, Tyler Bates match for the UK and, well, the UK and the American version of NXT. So, this is where some of the reports that have been coming out that I heard of when it was, when I was into JD. Where they're not doing that many shows. They have not re-signed to a certain place that we normally do it. Because NXT UK have been in the same place since the pandemic. And they keep re-signing it, but next to rugby coming back. They weren't able to sign it. 
but the thing, well, now I don't think cricket, but rugby. But now they have not re-signed it and they also haven't been talking about doing any shows. So there's a possibility that the UK branch is being shut down or they're reorganizing UK branch for what I believe um, Tyler said was NXT, NXT Europe. So maybe they're changing it to suit the new change in how NXT is going to be run. It's hard to say yet, but this is what it looks like. Now, we had a match. We had Gallus versus the Jensen brothers. Now, I've seen the Jensen's a couple of times. Compared to the guys over in Diamond Mind, these guys... I'm not saying that Jensen is bad, but I've only seen them maybe a couple of times. I've seen the ones in Diamond Mind a little bit more, so they look more polished than these guys. So I can't say they're doing well or not. Now, of course, Gallus won. I'm not surprised. How can they, 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 they do it? Now, mind you, this was not for the titles. Jensen didn't lose their titles due to the fact of interference with Diamond Mine. And what was it again? There was, well, Diamond Mine came out, then Pretty Deadly came out, and I believe another team might have come out. I'm not sure. I don't know. But two other teams came out, a brawl broke out, a time, and I can understand why they did the count out for, for pretty much the Jensen's. So they don't have to job and give up the titles yet, the UK titles. Because they are going to go up against Diamond Mine and probably unify the titles there at, um, what is it? What, what was it? The, um, I forgot which pay-per-view they're going to be doing because they're doing Clash at the Castle in about a week, I believe. And two weeks from now, they will do the NXT pay-per-view as well. So whatever happens here in the Clash at the Castle is going to filter over into NXT. And we will eventually get unified titles for the men, for the champions for the men. And now we're getting the women. Because we had several backgrounds. Well, not backgrounds. We had several segments. Let me give it to you like this when it comes to most of the segments and get them done. The Apollo segment with Grayson Waller effect was okay. And I liked how Apollo talked. Now, mind you, Apollo's not really one of the greatest characters. He, he, he does not have like a huge character. When he was doing the Nigerian Prince or Nigerian King, whatever you want to call it, he wasn't that bad. He made sure I, 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 he had these, 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 these accent. <laughs> and it was brought up. I will say compared to The Miz, the Grayson Waller was a little better when he basically confronted him because at the time Miz could not do it. Now he's doing it. It's all right in a sense that it's more, gr more gritty. But I do agree. This is a, a myth. This is a Miz Light show that's still filtered, still carrying over from the older regime. That's what this was created to be, and this is what it is. So, I really don't care that much about it, but I will say that they bring up some good points, and Apollo did sound okay, and he did lay them out. Simple as that. Now, um, we got Kevin Grimes go up against Beck, was it? Burdon, Burdon, I'm bad with the guy's name. I never seen him before, so I don't know. So Cam Grimes is still is now dealing with Joe Gacy, and the what is the name of that team now? What are they calling themselves? The Dido Diad Diad. I think that's what it's called, Diad. And Joe Gacy is controlling them, and I got something to say about the Diad. They they suck. They suck in, in the ring. They're sloppy, and I'll explain in a minute. But we see Cameron Grimes win his title. Well, not win his title, but you know the reason I'm botching here? Cameron Grimes. Who the hell is that? Who the hell was I watching? I mean, he had Cameron Grimes' moveset, but when you look at Cameron Grimes in the face and the, and the way he looked, I look like Cameron Grimes. Now, it's not just because his chest is shaved, his beard is short, his hair's still the same length almost. He doesn't look the same. He does not 
feel the same as Cameron Grimes to the moon. He doesn't feel like it. So I don't know who that guy is. He does not feel right. And yes, he won his match. And Joe Gacy is trying to get him to join his group. But since I have not watched NXT in so long, particularly after Cameron lost to LA Knight and was no longer the million dollar champ and no longer the, well, he, he did become a million dollar champ, but then they got rid of him. You know what I mean? But still, it just feels like Something's missing. Something, or I don't know what it is. There's something about him that's not right. Maybe it's because I haven't seen him in a while. Maybe it's because the character is so different, but there you go. Now, the next thing, Hartwell versus Davenport. I believe I've seen her twice, Davenport, outside of the WWE. I believe I have, maybe twice, once or twice, maybe. When they say that she is really good in the ring, I did not see it. I don't know if it was Hartwell. I don't know if it was her. But that match was incredibly botchy. It was sloppy, man. At one point near the end of the match, it just didn't look like Davenport was even trying to make the match look realistic or at least look competitive. Yeah, they kept going back and forth, but it didn't feel like they were going back and forth. It felt like she was just doing what she needed to do and... and Hartwell was doing what she needed to do, but it didn't feel important. Then the final, what was that? What was that? That didn't even look like a very good, um, which type of, I'm trying to think of what type of suplex she was trying to do. Because it was incredibly sloppy, and it looked like she could barely lift her up, and she shouldn't have. She looked like she almost broke her own hip trying to lift this woman up and then slam her. It didn't even feel like a slam. It just felt like she just lifted up and was sloppy. And yet, when it was all said and done, though, we got three people in the ring when it was over. We had Davenport saying that she's number one contender in UK and she will be UK champ. Then we had Mandy Rose, who didn't get called out, but felt like she got called out. And she was willing to confront them report and say, pretty much, I am the champ here. You're my ring. You're my world. You better show me some respect. And then we get Mako coming out. Mako Sonata. What is her name? Son Sonera. I believe. Sonera Sonata. Uh, no, Sonora. She is a legend in Japanese wrestling. And she's the current UK winner of their championship. And now she approaches Mandy and pretty much they want to have a match at the next pay-per-view. But then Davenport gets pissed off saying, hey, I'm number one contender. Why don't you pay attention to me? So now they're going to have a triple threat. It was already scheduled at the end of it. It may even be the thumbnail. Sloppy, but good. Kind of. Sloppy, but okay. Maybe that might be what I might use as a title. Now, going to Hartwell. Hartwell, after that, seemed lost. Supposedly, for the last four months, she has not been able to get anything done. And then we get Dexter Loomis showing up. She kisses the hell out of the guy. She hugs the hell out of the guy. She leaves the ring, and she gets handed something. I didn't read what it said on the paper. It wasn't clear enough to see. And he gets arrested. Really? It kind of goes along with what's going on in Raw and SmackDown because he keeps attacking. And they finally hunted him down and they arrested him again. That means he keeps getting away. But, really? It's kind of sloppy. Let's move on. Okay. What is the name of them? Pretty much, let's, let's put this in perspective. The D'Angelo family with the guys that are from Escobar's own team which has been forced to work with a D'Angelo and Dyad. Dyad was so bad. The body slams were bad. The the drop kicks were bad. Fighting in the ring was bad. Everything looked bad when it came to them. I, I did not feel them at all. They looked sloppy. They looked bad. Maybe they just did not have any chemistry. Because when you look at 
Escobar's guys. I believe one of them was um El what is the guy's name? El um I'm watched, so I forgot their names, forget it. Both of them did well. But Dyad did not. They looked so sloppy. You couldn't even do even the most simplest moves. They looked menacing, but they were sloppy. In the end, they won, and there was a reason for it because De um, Delio Escobar, I keep mis mispronouncing, when I see him long enough, I'll remember his name. Escobar pretty much drives up an SUV and says, you guys ready to go? You think I'll leave you behind? He puts them in, the, in his SUV, and they're gone. So that means they're either going to SmackDown or Raw. I believe they go to SmackDown. I believe that family is going to SmackDown, and that's where things will be very interesting. Don't know if it's going to work immediately. I want to make that clear. But it looks interesting that a new group is going to possibly end up on SmackDown. But I don't think they end up on Raw. That's just me. Um, Taylor Bates versus Ven Wagner. This is where there's a problem. I'd rather have not seen him wrestle. I'd rather have not seen him. Honestly. I'd rather have they left it alone. Because, yes, he defeated Von Wagner. Von Wagner is so, so good in the ring. And Bates had to really work hard to make it look believable as much as he could. But Von Wagner was not the best person to team him up with. Wasn't. I, I'm, I'm sure everyone else is going to say it was a great match. It was perfect for me. No. It looked like Tyler had to try hard to make it look believable. And it should not be tried hard to make it look believable. It should just look somewhat believable. Any, any one, and I'm not surprised. But here is where it gets interesting to see, will he, who is the first UK champ, and now considered the last UK champ, is going to be doing in their pay-per-view in two weeks. It's going to be interesting. Finally, we get the Lights Out match, which made no damn sense. Lights Out match with Chu and Tiffany Stratton, I believe her name is, Wendy Chu and... Tiffany Stratton. Lights out match. Where legitimately they made the lights go down. Say that again. They made the color kind of bluish and they turned the lights down. Why did you do that? AEW did it right. Why would you need to turn the lights down in a lights out match? It's not necessary. Who was the idiot? I don't care if it was Triple H himself. Who was the freaking idiot that thought turning the lights down in a lights out match would be good? It would have been good to just have the light and the sun in the ring and making it dark on the outside so it would be hard for people to see, but you would see what's going on. Why would you make everything dark and kind of bluish? Really? Now, was the match bad? It wasn't that bad, but we are talking about two amateurs here. I didn't feel nothing from Tiffany. I've seen her a couple of times in highlights and a vignette, and she looks like she needs more work. Is she cute? Hell yeah. Who wouldn't want to look at someone as cute as her? Then you look at Wendy. Does she look okay? Yeah, she's not bad looking. And she also seemed to be all right in the ring. But both of them feel amateurish. And you stuck them into a match that's like a monster's ball match. That pretty much you made it too dark. And then the thing that made everyone go holy shit, which I don't know why they said holy shit. Why would you do holy shit? With a bed that was maybe less than this off the ground. My hand is the ground. This is where the bed is. If it was like where my hand is to here outside the frame. Where my own torso is. Then maybe if you slammed her on it. If you threw her on it from top the skirt of the ring. Really? It's only this much height. And those idiots were cheering holy shit. For her slamming into a bed that broke. Really? I didn't buy that shit. That was the most lamest match I've ever seen when it came to the ending. Were they all right in the middle to the beginning? It wasn't too bad. But the lighting really screwed it up for me personally. I really don't feel anything from Wendy much. Honestly, if I look at Tiffany versus Wendy, who could get somewhere? It could be Wendy. Because she's stuck with an even worse gimmick than Tiffany is. And she's got to try and make it interesting. And the crowd was very much behind her. So I think Wendy is a little more developed. 
than Tiffany, who's the little uh, daddy's little girl shit. She doesn't feel important. And it came to Wendy, she did. So, uh, sloppy. I'm just going to, you know, I'm just going to leave it as a title I've been thinking. I'm just going to say sloppy because it didn't feel important and it was sloppy at the end and people ate it up and I didn't. Maybe it's because I'm more jaded. Let, let's, let's put a little devil's, devil advocate in this situation where you got one side and you got the other. Where someone like me would be seen by other people. And they're going to say, oh, this guy is just chewing out. And this is why JD said, get the fuck out of here. Or just Alex, why are you even watching wrestling? Why are you here? We need you to get on board. I'm going to give you both sides. What I saw in NXT, both of them would say is not perfect. It still needs work. Possibly Bruce Pritchard is still producing it. Have a little more patience. You don't have to be that bad. Take your time. Just watch. You'll start seeing incremental things. This is what they would say. And I understand what they said. And this is my point of view. You got a sloppy production of NXT. Where the wrestlers didn't do a very good job. The lighting for the last match was stupid. The production for most of the people in there are still very, very sloppy and confusing. Mostly due to the fact that there's now regime change. And whoever's producing the show maybe throwing a little bit of extra to try and make it a little better. But it's obvious. The wrestlers, they're kind of stuck and they don't know what the hell to do with themselves. Cameron Grimes doesn't feel important. He should. I, Apollo Crews is possibly going to be somewhere, but when it came to Grayson Waller, he should already be higher and he's not. So it's like there's a very funny transition time inside NXT. Where who knows if it's ever going to be corrected or not. For me personally, I still say, as I said in the beginning of this review, I'm giving you a fair, honest review. Not in rose-colored glasses. Just like what happened with my, my review of Ric Flair's last match. I had to make a decision between the person who loves wrestling and Ric Flair and the person who's reviewing it fairly. Rick's match sucked. This show was sloppy. And I'm telling you guys right now. Not to watch WWE or any of the products. But I am telling you. Unlike everyone else. I'm one of the few that's going to be honest to you. And tell you. This sucks. Be careful. We have gone through this before. Even though just Alex and JD would say. No we have not gone through this before. We haven't gone through this. Vince has never been gone. It's not the point. You're not getting it. We had, years ago, more than a few times, a reboot every other year from WWE. It doesn't matter if it's now Triple H or Steph or Vince. We have gone through this where they're trying to get things started over and over again. And every time we got a very good product because Vince gave us what we wanted a little bit and then tapered off back to the way it was. Now, we also had that on SmackDown, and then it tapered off. Now, I'm not saying that when it comes to Triple H, you'll do the same thing. I'm not. But we have gone through this, even if it is from the previous regime, it is still what the company does. And if people don't want to hear that, you can kiss my black ass. Because when it really comes down to it, this is what we get. I'm just saying to be wary about it, not to just go all in on it. Just look and see what you're seeing. Yes, they're right. The product is not perfect, but at least someone is honestly telling you we've gone through this before, even if it was the previous administration. That's it. Peace.